I'm Lawrence Cooper and I work at the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. So taking care of children with cancer is a privilege. You know, it really feels in some ways like a calling. You know, there is a sense uh, about pediatric oncology where you want to, you have great empathy for the family. You sit on the bedside, uh, but the family does not need another weeping person in the room. What the family really needs is a person who's going to provide intellect and passion and energy to get in that person out of the dire situation they're in. Fortunately, I stand on the shoulders of giants where physicians, men and women, have come before me who have really advanced the field of pediatric oncology. But in some ways, and this is kind of a strange statement in 2014, we've reached a point of diminishing returns with the types of therapies that we're delivering to children. So what does one do when you're stuck? What is a way out of this? And I think this is where the NFCR and really the, uh, the support really of uh, people around me is so important. Because what I have tried to do is say, look, this is not sufficient. We gotta do better. And one way to do better is to go back to the lab. Well, one of the things we do is we work on how the immune system, in other words, T cells, so-called T cells, or B cells, or, or flavors of, of, of the immune cells that are in your body and in my body at this moment in time, can be harnessed to, instead of protecting us, say, from infection, can protect us from cancer. And not only that, could actually be fashioned into weapons that could be deployed to treat cancer. And we do think of them in some ways as a sort of a war metaphor. These T cells, and the T comes from the word thymus, an organ that lives up in your neck. These T cells, for instance, can be thought as foot, foot soldiers, where they can be uh, assembled outside of the body, just like a battalion, just like a general would assemble his or her army. Then they are essentially weaponized, and they are deployed and put back into the patients. So adoptive immunotherapy is a science whereby we can harness the killing potential of immune cells, immune cells like T cells, immune cells like NK cells. They can be made into weapons to fight cancer outside of the body, and then actually packaged, put into a bottle, and infused through the vein into patients with cancer. When we do that experiment, we're putting into patients T cells that have an ability to find the tumor and like little surgical scalpels on a cell-by-cell -cell basis, they can recognize friend from foe. In other words, they can recognize the tumor cell and distinguish it from normal cells. When that happens, you essentially have an autonomous functioning soldier, let's say, at the site of the tumor. Just, just think with me for a second in your mind's eye as if you were standing next to a giant cell and you were gonna poke a hole in that cell with a barb or a, or a spear. Well, you're, you're the actor, you're the effector cell, you're the T cell, and now we're up against, physically, we're up against a tumor cell. So my job in the lab, and with, for instance, support from the NFCR, is to generate those cells, generate those T cells that have that spear. And not only are we able to therefore make us a foot soldier, a T cell, that can go after an immune cell, but we can do this in a way that when we infuse the cells, those foot soldiers, those T cells can make their own decisions on a cell by cell basis. Are you an enemy? Are you a friend? Do I kill you or do I leave you alone? And we do that through a process of genetic engineering. We actually go into the genome of the T cell where we insert code, the building blocks of life that we have made in tissue culture, in plates from first principles and then we insert those genes into the T cell, and then that T cell's hardwired. It does our bidding. It is our agent, and it's a faithful agent because it will then go into the body and execute that killer, that tumor cell and leave the normal cells alone. I live in, the, in a world of uncertainty. I'm charged with the moral imperative to, to save a child with cancer. I have to think of things that really are, are just not available if they were available, let's face it, that kid wouldn't have had cancer, right? They wouldn't be in my hospital. They wouldn't be at the MD Anderson. So I have to think of ways that are novel and new and untested. And this is where we need philanthropic support. And quite frankly, this is where the NFCR shines because it's able essentially to hold that uncertainty. It lives essentially in a space, in a funding space that says, you know, there's no certainty that Cooper will get it right. 
but there's every expectation he's going to try and there's every hope and optimism given his training and his track record that there might actually be therapeutic success. We just essentially are working in a space that's hard, it's knotty, it's uncertain, and we need backers, and the NFCR backs us. It's a group that essentially, under Franklin's leadership, you know, is with us, I think, you know, to, to see this through. And it could be a year, it could be 10 years. Um, and the expectation is that we're gonna get it right and we're not gonna do something that's just iterative. We're gonna do something that's transformative. We're actually gonna cure, if I could use big words, cure cancer. We're going after the big prize.